Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden. I'm here with my good friend Trevor. Welcome to the Geek Group. Nice to be here. And we're doing high voltage fun because, wow, the emails we've had. Now, we've done a series before on how to build a Tesla coil out of regular household parts, and the series is on pause right now. It's on hold because we're waiting on Billy and all that jazz. That series is coming. We're going to be back on that because I know there's a lot of people out there that are interested in that. But we've had a lot of email about we need to make a Tesla coil series and all this, and we've really been trying not to for like, uh, we wanted to wait about another six months because we're just getting the new lab. That's why the Billy series stopped because we got a big building and that took everybody's time. And Billy's off doing school things. He's doing this really cool aviation stuff. He's a fireman now, which is awesome. And all kinds of things are happening there. But Trevor here wandered into the lab and tell him, tell him the story about your Tesla coil need. Well, I am doing a project for school and basically it was whatever I want to do and I want to build a Tesla coil. You want to build a Tesla coil. <laughs> So, but the cool thing is, you wanted to do this with a geek group, you need a Tesla coil for school, you've got a very tight deadline, and there's pretty much no rules at all. Right. So, the big difference is before we were, the other Tesla coil is designed on stuff you can do with household stuff. This Tesla coil, we can bring the full resources of the lab to bear and show people just what you can do with all the geek group has to offer, which is pretty fun. So you've shown up with, well, you, you brought tape. Okay, so we've got double-sided sticky tape, and I have a piece of pipe. This is just a piece of, I think it's 4-inch PVC. Okay, it's IPS Schedule 40 um, cell core PVC pipe, which is sewer pipe. You can buy it at your local big box store. And I put, this is high tech here. Come on off. There. We've got the pipe. That is the foundation of our entire coil, right there. So we've got that. And a very high-tech fitting, because we're gonna to wanna to stand this up. So I got one of these. This is a toilet flange. Oh. If you lift up your toilet in your house, that's what's under it. Like on the side of your toilet, there's, there's the two bolts. Those bolts go into these slots. Good to know. So this will go in there, and then that will sit like that, and we'll bolt this down to our thing, and we've got a Tesla coil. Sounds good. Now with the Billy series, we had to do, because it was designed so that people at home could follow along and build their things with what they have. So we use like a cutting board and things like that. This is what we can do with the Geek Group. So this would be totally different. Some of it's gonna be very similar, but instead of making a homemade winding jig, we're gonna wind this on the lathe. Um, we're gonna cut all the pieces in a sheet router. We're gonna rock out. It's gonna be a whole series. We're gonna bang this through. Now we're getting together once a week to make the videos here. So if you wanna come and watch Tuesdays, at three o'clock here at the lab, between three and five, we're making this series, and everybody is welcome to come and watch and see this in person. It's gonna be a fun time, but this is the inaugural kickoff video. So we're gonna to start today by seeing if we can get this wound. All right. It's gonna be our first thing. So we're off to the lathe. Sounds good. All right, you guys stay tuned. We'll be back right after this while the camera crew curses my name and we pack everything up and move to the machine shop. Ever wonder how you could improve the world with just one dollar? At the Geek Group, we not only recognize the importance of the donations of our corporate sponsors, but also the private contributions from viewers like you that make the continuation of our dreams possible. With every single donation we receive, whether it's 20 cents, 20 dollars, or more, we come another step closer to making science, math, knowledge, and arts education more accessible to the entire world, and are further enabled to inspire new minds each and every day. Open your mind for less. Please visit thegeekgroup.org slash kickabook to make your donation today, and watch how powerful even the smallest donation can be. All right, we're back, and we're going to use the power of the Haas TL1 lathe. This is our tool room lathe. Right. Full CNC lathe, can do amazing things, and we're, we're using this at the level of technology of somebody who uses, like, buys the most awesome hardcore stereo system and just uses it to play DVDs. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. So what we've got, so we've got our pipe, Okay, now we're gonna need that. But to put the pipe in the lathe, we need, we need a way to hold that in there and make sure it's concentric. Right. So years ago, like 2005, we made the solution and it sat on a shelf since then. And it's right here. This is what you need. This is, and that's even my handwriting there. It's the standard four inch ID. Okay, it's just standard pipe, right? And it's, it's the same as yours. Right. 
And then this is the four inch coil form plug A. All right. Okay, here, we'll show it to our Corey. That's our four inch coil form plug A and our four inch coil form plug B. Now what we do is we take this out. So you grab, grab that end and we gotta just pull it out. Okay, now take the pipe. Here, let me, let me set this aside, we'll need that. Take the pipe, there. Now we've got two plugs, A and B. Right. Now B has a hole down the middle and that hole is perfectly coaxial and concentric to here. Okay. And this is just a very slight taper on each. Okay. So what it's for is we take our T-wrench and we're gonna open our chuck and this will take a minute. There. Now we put this in and we push it all the way back to the face so that we, because we know that's flat and we know the face is very, very flat. So we put that in there and we tighten it down ever so gently. It doesn't have to be terribly tight. Okay. So that's one end. Now on the other end, this is where it gets tricky. So we've got that in there and that's, that's tight so it's not gonna come flopping out. Now give me the pipe, please. We're gonna take the pipe and we're gonna move this. That's all the way back. And we'll need to see where we're gonna have to be. So we have to go back a bit. Now hold the pipe right about there and I'll slide our tailstock back so it's out of the way. I gotta go around over here and grab it. All right. Because it's very heavy. Okay, now our tailstock's out of the way and we're gonna take our B plug. Now remember the hole? Right. The hole is so that the point of the tailstock fits in the hole. Okay. So we take this and we slide it on. Nice and easy, and it goes right down to the jaws. And this needs to come back a little bit more. I don't know if we can, I think we may have every inch of pipe we can fit in this machine at once. Okay. We have to get a little creative. So we'll slide this in here. <laughs> Hold that right there. I'm gonna pull that. If I can get us another half inch, we're okay. All right. You got that? Plenty. Thank you. All right, now slide that on. Now we gotta make sure that it isn't gonna flop around. Okay, we're cool there. Now I'm gonna bring this in, okay? You where you wanna be? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, now we tighten this down. And that tightens our tailstock so that it's not gonna slide back. Okay. And then we reach back like this and turn a little wheel. We're gonna bring that right in. And as that comes in, it's gonna tighten everything up. And then we lock this down. Now, if we were actually turning this to like remove material, this, I wouldn't consider this safe enough for something so long, cause it'd wanna whip around. But because we're just doing this to wind the wire on, it's gonna turn very, very slowly. Okay. So our speed is going to be right about there. So this is flying speed, okay, it's huge. Now as we get into the groove, we can just punch the spindle speed up by 10% each time. Okay. But we're, that's right about there is probably going to be the fastest we want to do this. But by being able to do that, this turns a job that would take us hours in two minutes. It oh. makes it a million times easier. And it's on there rigid enough that like you can grab that and it's not gonna come off. So the first thing we're gonna do is clean this. All right. So we're just gonna wipe this down, get it all clean and dry, and then we'll put our tape on and then we're gonna wind it. So okay. it's really easy. So the first thing we do is uh, I'm gonna give it a very light sanding and then we're gonna just clean it off. So, but I'm gonna bring our speed up to about there. And um, Moose always keeps some sandpaper out here. So we'll get some rather fine sandpaper and this is totally not critical. We have some 225 grit right here. And we just put this right on here. And all we're going to do is scuff this up a little bit. Making, making this just, grooves? Yeah, well, not even making grooves. We're just making the surface a little tiny bit rough. And this makes the uh, tape and any adhesives to it stick just a little bit better. OK. We're just scuffing it just a little tiny bit. And it's really that easy. That's all we had to do. Okay, now feel the surface. See how it's rough? Oh yeah. Yep. And now we can stop that. And now we've got a nice rough surface 
and little hairs poking out that will follow your hand, which is kind of cool. So it's a little fuzzy. So you just rub it down, and that gets rid of those. Um, we might grab a higher grit of sandpaper. Like this is, that's the same stuff. That's 1500, which is like just paper with <laughs> no sand on it at all. Um, she's got a lot of 225. Yeah, we'll take that and that'll just knock off those little hairs. All right, now we're gonna just wipe it down. We have our high dollar, just regular glass cleaner and a paper towel, something that won't leave a residue. I'm gonna wipe this off. You, for safety, need to take off your hoodie because right. you don't want anything, when you're working around a lathe in that, you don't want anything hanging. Because right. if, it, if it catches it, like if the jaw catches that, it's an e-ticket ride. All so right. just set that aside and we'll be cool. Now I'm gonna fire this back up. And we're cool there. So we're just gonna put, all we wanna do is just give it a little bit of just cleaning any dust off it. Cause we're gonna put tape on this and we want our tape to stick. That's very, very important. <coughs> so we just give it a little wipe down because we just got this at the store and it's pretty clean. There are people that are fanatical about their Tesla coil and will like at, at the big serious level, see there's a little bit of gunge on here. Mm -hmm. at, at the big serious level, you wanna have everything sanded and super cleaned and they'll coat it with like a sealant, like they'll epoxy like coat it. Like with Gemini. Yeah, like with Gemini, at, at that level, there's, there's a lot of work. I mean, for us to make a secondary for like Gemini would take us a couple weeks. Ah. For this level of just a little tabletop knock it together coil for what most of the people watching this, if they're watching this video, they're not building Geminis. They're, they're building this kind of thing. So this is, this is all you have to do. You just want to get it clean and dry. So we'll grab a couple towels here and just dry this off because you want to make sure it's all dry. All right. The funny thing is, while we're doing this, the amount of static that we're I building up on it, that, yeah, yeah you, can, you can hear it crackling. If I had planned ahead, I'd have probably cleaned out all the sawdust in there because I'm surprised we haven't started attracting little tiny particles of sawdust oh. up here yet. It'll be okay though, because we're about to wrap this thing in wire, which will take all that charge off to whoever's holding the wire and ground it out through them. So, we've got that. Now our next step is, have you got the tape? I do. Okay. We're gonna take the tape. Now we did this in the Billy series. It's the exact same process. It's just what we're using to hold it. With the Billy series, we held the, the unit, the, the coil form, with uh, just, we made a jig. Here we're using the lathe. And the lathe lets us get away with murder. It's great. Because the lathe, we can spin it forwards, we can spin it backwards, we can stop, we can change speeds, we can do anything we want, and it makes life a lot easier. Right. And it's also very, very rigid. So what I'm gonna do is take our, now this is just plain old double-sided tape, nothing special, and I'm gonna lay this on here, and I'm just gonna hold this down and slowly turn it, and we'll wind a helix of that tape right on a coil form. It's really easy to do. And this way, when we wind our wire on here, this gives the wire something to stick to. You don't need to put the tape on first. It just makes it a lot easier. I wonder. Ah! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's a good thing I bought multiple tape. We gotta remember when we're doing this, it's in reverse. Right. And I it, hadn't thought of that. It just ran out. Oh, okay. That's it. That seems to work a little smoother. Yeah, that's better. Minor little catastrophe there, but we're okay now. All right, so there, we'll just lay this in. And that actually works really, really well. Now, without the tape, would the wire have any chance of staying on? You can do it without the tape, but it makes it harder. And 
we're already complicating this enough, but really why, why make it any harder than we need to? Right. I love how you can see all the air bubbles on the tape. Isn't that neat? Let's take that right up to the top and stop right there. And then we'll pull that off and lay that down on there. Now we've got tape. We've got more tape. It's kind of a <laughs> logarithmic wind, but it'll be okay. And we just use a lot of that roll in like a minute. So that's kind of fun. Now we've got to get wire and we've got to get a way to hold that wire. And this can be tricky. I've never done this on this lathe before. So we don't have anything like pre-made to just, cause so far it's like, Hey, I just, I happen to have this laying around. Do, 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 do. So we've got to get creative. We've got to figure out how to mount our wire. So we're going to go figure that out and we'll be right back. Okay. All right. All right. We're back. We've got our spool of wire. This is 22 gauge magnet wire, which is right. pretty much the size you want for like a four or six inch secondary. And we've got a very high tech solution involving a big screwdriver. Thanks to Batman. This is a number four Phillips, which is, I think the largest Phillips head screwdriver we have in stock. Okay. Now on this end, I'm, and this is important to remember. Normally on a lathe, things go this way. So if we press forward, it's going to spin towards us. Okay. And we can wind it that way. It just, I don't know why, but for me, whenever I wind a secondary, I always do it away from me. Oh. So we're actually going to want to spin it backwards like that. So we got to remember to do that. So we're going to start off. We're just going to take a little bit of this and I'm just going to wrap it right around <coughs> one of the jaws of the three jaw chuck. All right. Okay. And that's just our anchor. Okay. Now you're going to want to take about two steps back because we want this to be a nice, easy line. And I'm going to hold the wire here and the button here, and we're going to try not to die. We are at 10% of a hundred. So we should have 10 or no, we're at 20% of a hundred. So, okay. 10%, that should be 10 RPM in reverse. And I'm going to get this started by hand. Right there. Okay, you ready? Yep. Here we go. down. I'm going to cut that there and, and we're just going to let that set and we can wrap that up. Yep. Here, we can just put this right back. here. Hold the other side. We'll just pull that right on there. Oh, good. Not Keep bad. the wire. All right. You good? Yeah. All right. We'll just stick this down the hole in the middle and that'll probably, well, it doesn't want to do that either. All right. We'll stick it under and give it a little half twist. That'll be okay. All right. So that's our leftover wire. And we give that to Batman. Thank you, sir. All right, now we have a secondary. The next step is we got to code it. Right. Because we could take it off of there right now and it'll probably be okay, but to really make it safe, we want to coat that on there. So we're going to take a piece of tape and we can even use the double-sided sticky tape that we've been using. 
and I want to tape this last tail of wire in place on here. So where's the tape at? I'm not sure. Thank you. I'm just going to tape this on right there because this at the bottom is going to get unwound a bit by the time we're done and the top as well. We'll probably lose about you, the last inch on each end probably goes away. Now this isn't anywhere near perfect. There's, there's voids and gaps in that, but it's nothing major. Um, we had a couple major ones, so that's where we stopped and went back. Right. There's no overlaps and that's important. Um, it, having a little, a little void like that, it, does, it isn't going to care. It's, a, it's an art thing at that point, and it's how much time do you want to spend doing it. If we wanted to do this three or four times and get it absolutely perfect, we could do that. Or if we wanted to get it absolutely perfect in one shot and sit here and wind it for two hours, <laughs> but neither of us want to do that. And that made life a lot easier, just winding it on a lathe. So our next step is we're going to find a coating to put on here, and then we'll let this spin all night and just dry. Okay. So our next step is we're going to take a break, we're going to come back, and we're going to have coating. All right. All right. All right, now we're back, and we've got polyacrylic, which is a water-based top coat, semi-gloss. It says it's clear and it's polyurethane, so I think it'll be fine. All right. And we've got a handful of brushes and eye protection because we're flinging. And even though it's really low, this can spit, so we want to be careful not to do that. Okay. Um, now we're going to bring our spin to speed. We're going to go for No, we're going to keep going reverse. Okay, uh, we're going to go about that fast. So this is 40 RPM, all right? Now, mid, the middle way. Moose is going to yell at us a lot. This is like 20 bucks for a jar of this, and I'm pretty sure it's way more than we need for what we're doing. Okay. So she's probably going to yell at us a lot. So see, we do this on the lathe, and we can just brush this on. And that helps get the bubbles out. All right. And there's no drips, no runs, no bubbles, which is really cool for coating. All right. You just put it in there. You just set it on top and hold it and let it work into all the little grooves. Okay. And in theory, if I just perfectly hold it there, this will track all the way down the thing but that would make me crazy having to wait that long. And so this is also gonna help hold the wire on? Yeah, this, this is what's really gonna hold the wire on. The tape just holds the wire while we're winding it and while we're first building it. Doing it with the acrylic, and you can do several coats of this. I mean, I've seen people do this where they build up a layer like an eighth inch thick. Oh. If, if you look at Gemini, it's actually got a pretty thick layer of coating on it. Oh, okay. I think we can go faster. Do you have to take all that off when you, uh, or if you have to redo the wiring? We never redo one. If, if, if a secondary gets damaged, it's just dead to us. Oh. Um, we've, we've never rewound a secondary. Sounds like it'd be a nightmare. Yeah, I, we've unwound one. Um, the Haruka project, which was wound by uh, a member wound it, and it was really poorly done. When we brought the secondary into the lab, the wire just fell off it, so we had to unwind the whole secondary. Okay. And it was unwound with a pair of diagonal cutters. It was, it was bad. Like, we just cut it right off. A lot of wasted wire. Yeah. That, all that wire just went in a scrap bin. And that was a big secondary. That was, that was a Gemini-sized secondary. Wow. Not the kind of thing you want to get lazy on. Yeah. The uh, coil form itself, the big piece of pipe, ended up being used in other projects. That's good. I know there was a member that took, like, they, it got cut into pieces. But so you just lay, you lay this on here, and capillary action will wick it right in. So all you gotta really do is just thin out the, the upper parts. Okay. And right now I'm just making sure to fill it all in and then we'll smooth it out. Because we're not gonna do this in just one coat.
And it's okay if we get a little bit on the coil form holders down here because those are made out of UHMW and pretty much nothing sticks to UHMW. Okay. Like glue won't stick to it, the, the paint stuff will come right off. So now we've laid it in heavy and now we just go back and do it light. And you just follow it like that and you see the bead on the right side? Yeah. You just slowly push that bead right on down and by the time you get to the other end you'll have an even coat like that. Okay, so just tweak. You're up, enjoy. So, we've done it. We have wound and coated a toroid. At this point, it really is just watching paint dry. So we're gonna let this dry for a couple hours and put another layer on, let dry for a couple hours, and we'll do this overnight. Okay. And the cool thing is overnight, we can let this just spin down like that. And as long as it's spinning, even just that slow, it won't drip, nothing will run. So it'll be a perfect, smooth, Secondary, and that's, that's the secret to it is rotisserie. Just keep it moving. And you can do this at home with like a grill rotisserie or something like that, it's really easy to do. But that's all you gotta do is just keep it moving and when this dries, it, it says on the jar it's water clear. So when this dries, all the white will go away just like caulk and it'll just be clear. So cool, I wanna thank you for coming sir. Thank you. And letting us help you on your project. You guys have fun, we'll be back next week for another episode of Tessa Coil with Trevor. This is Trevor's, this is the Trevor Coil. So, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. I'm Trevor Kenya. And we, of course, will see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.